Chairman Johnson, members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to testify respecting lessons learned from the collapse of MF Global. I have previously testified respecting MF Global's misuse of segregated customer funds and CME's efforts on behalf of customers. Today I will summarize our efforts and the industry to restore customer confidence. The shortfall in customer segregated funds was limited to the funds under MF Global's control. The customer funds held in segregation by CME's clearinghouse to cover futures positions were complete. Our ability to transfer the positions and the collateral of our customers was undone by a provision in the bankruptcy code requiring pro rata loss sharing among all customers. We believe that Congress can help protect customers whose collateral is safeguarded at a clearinghouse. It can do that by changing the bankruptcy code to permit clearinghouses to transfer fully collateralized customers to other clearing members despite a failure, failure of their clearing member. The industry is united in its search for solutions that will restore confidence in regulated futures and derivatives markets. Obviously, changes in the bankruptcy code are not easy or quick, and it is constructive to look at a wide range of actions that can be implemented without legislation. CME Group, along with other exchanges and the National Futures Association, has proposed four forms of intensified reporting to prevent misuse of customer funds. The Futures Industry Association, on behalf of its members, also proposed enhanced reporting and greater transparency. CME Group is already implementing proposals, which will include, one, mandatory daily reporting of segregation statements by all FCMs, two, additional surprise reviews of customer segregated accounts, three, a requirement that the FCM's CEO or CFO sign all payouts of customer segregated funds exceeding 25% of excess segregated fund amounts, plus immediate notification to CME, and four, a bimonthly reports reflecting how segregated funds are invested and where they are held. CME has also challenged the industry and the Commission to consider whether other solutions will better serve the interests of customers and the industry. In addition to the proposed amendment of the Bankruptcy Code, CME is working with its clearing members to find a structure that will protect their collateral against fellow customer and fraud risks. We are committed to finding a solution that will provide strong protection for the segregated funds of futures and swap customers from a legal, operational, and cost-benefit perspective without destroying the industry's business model. In addition to these regulatory uh, initiatives, we also recently launched the CME Group Family Farmer and Rancher Protection Fund. This fund is designed to protect family farmers, family ranchers, and the cooperatives in the event of shortfalls in segregated funds. We hope these steps will give additional confidence to U.S. futures markets after the actions and failure of MF Global. The misconduct of MF Global, however, should not serve as a reason to undermine the current system of frontline auditing and regulating by clearinghouses and exchanges. Some critics suggest that the current regulatory system is compromised by conflicts of interest. There is no conflicts of interest in CME's duties to the CFTC, to its customers, and its shareholders. CME's duty to its shareholders requires that it diligently keep its markets fair and open by vigorously regulating all market participants. Federal law mandates an organizational structure that eliminates conflicts of interest. The current regulatory model has served the futures industry, its customers, and the public very well. We look forward to working with the Congress and the regulators to enhance customer protections and foster confidence in our markets. I thank you for your time this afternoon.